So hello and welcome to another video my friends. Uh, I hope you've all been well. It's been a few months since I was able to bring you uh, a video, uh, mainly because I was out of the country um, shooting and then visiting my daughter in the UK as well. Uh, so it's not been possible. And then since getting back to Greece a few weeks ago, uh, I had a workshop to lead. Uh, and then getting back to the village here, uh, I moved into this little cottage, um, which, uh, having been abandoned for the last few years, uh, needed a bit of work to uh, make it livable. So I haven't been able to get out that much and uh, do much filming or photography. Uh, plus the weather's been absolutely horrible. Um, the wind, I, the uh, rain I can cope with, but the wind has been just really bad. Um, so yeah, uh, anyway, I was asked uh, in the comments uh, to a couple of the previous videos I made about manual focusing. Uh, so I thought I would uh, make a video about it um, and give you some uh, tips, hints, techniques, and uh, the main uh, thing of why use manual focus. Um, I should also emphasize that I'm talking about manual focusing for filming wildlife, uh, not photographing. Um, reason being that the autofocus in uh, modern cameras, um, both the latter DSLR and um, the very latest mirrorless, is fantastic um, uh, for photography and there's absolutely no reason why anyone should need to use manual focus when photographing wildlife. The story is a little bit different when it comes to filming wildlife, however, and um, the main reason being that whilst the autofocus is, is fantastic in um, most modern cameras, uh, especially the, the later, uh, latest mirrorless cameras, and autofocusing technology has, has just come on uh, amazingly uh, from your basic face detect to now eye detect and eye detect in humans and animals birds and mammals um, to its ability to track focus, track a subject and maintain focus. Um, it's all in improved dramatically over the last few years. Um, but having said that, that's true for when cameras are set in photo mode. Um, a lot of cameras when you switch to video mode, um, either the autofocusing um, doesn't work at all, is non-existent, uh, or it's uh, really limited. So for example, in, in Canon cameras, I think, the Canon mirrorless cameras, um, you lose animal eye focus uh, when switching to video. Um, that might have changed, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a, a, a modern mirrorless camera myself, so I can't uh, really comment on that. But suffice to say that uh, in, in, in video mode, for most cameras, the autofocusing is just uh, not good enough. And the way I can sort of illustrate that is that if you are a wildlife photographer and you, you, you'll have experienced this, is when you have a, an animal that you say that you, is on the move and you have your camera set in, into uh, you know, machine gun mode and you fire off 20, 30 shots or whatever, a few of those uh, in between all the sharp shots are going to be out of focus where the camera has briefly uh, lost focus. Um, and whilst you're photographing, you, you pay no mind really to that when it comes to the edit suite. Uh, because you're happy with the sharp pictures that you got and you ignore the, um, the out-of-focus ones where the camera lost focus. Now, if that was in video, those moments where you lost focus uh, would render that clip completely useless. Uh, and usually because in video mode, when, you, when you're shooting, the moment that it does lose focus, there is a high uh, risk, a high chance that the camera will start hunting for focus. So not only will, it, will, the, will the shot just go out of focus, uh, but then the camera will start hunting backwards and forwards, trying to reacquire the subject, and that hunting makes the clip completely useless. So what I'm really talking about is uh, image quality. Um, 
and using manual focus uh, in video for that reason alone pretty much uh, you will achieve a much uh, better hit rate a better quality of image um, and have more keeper clips than uh, you will have uh, lost clips a second reason uh, for learning and using um, manual focusing is that it's actually the ind industry standard for professional filmmakers, um, camera operators, cameramen, women. And in, in, in large part, uh, it's due to the fact that um, by the time somebody sort of graduates from beginner to mid-range to expensive um, cameras, uh, retail cameras, should we call it, photographic cameras that also do amazing video, and you graduate into cinema cameras, um, you start losing more and more the ability uh, for autofocus auto uh, in those cinema cameras. So whilst it might exist, uh, you might have pretty good autofocus in something like a Sony FX6, um, still not uh, good enough for filming wildlife, but it, it, it is pretty good. Um, by the time you get up to a Komodo, uh, a red Komodo, or an Ari, or something along those lines, um, autofocusing is pretty much non-existent. So in professional filmmaking, uh, you have no choice other than to uh, manual focus. And if that's your intention to go uh, into professional uh, filmmaking, wildlife filmmaking, uh, then you really need to get a hold of manual focusing. And the last reason that I'm going to mention, although there are, I'm sure, plenty more um, for learning how to manual focus as opposed to relying on autofocus, is that, um, again, going back to image quality and camera techniques that you can use uh, with, uh, with manual focus that you can't use or are not as effective with autofocus. And what I'm talking about are techniques such as racking focus or, or pushing, pulling focus. And what that means uh, basically um, is that in any particular shot, uh, you might want to change your point of focus from a subject that is distant to a subject that is closer. And by pulling focus in that way, so you, you pull focus from the distant object to the close one, um, you can change emphasis uh, in your shot. So it's, it's a, 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 a static shot and you're changing emphasis. And it's a really effective shot to use in filmmaking. So for example, if you had uh, in the far distance a predator of some kind, like a lion or something, uh, and then in the foreground you have its prey, a wildebeest, a zebra or something, and so you're focused on the distant lion and by following its gaze, basically, you can change the point of focus to its prey, uh, and that gives a different emphasis to, to your clip and really adds um, a lot of power to the sequence that you're trying to put together. Um, so that's another effective way, uh, a, a photographic, a filming technique, I should say, uh, that is really effective in storytelling that you can only really use effectively with manual focus. Trying to do that with autofocus and then changing by tapping on the, on the screen your point of focus from one subject to the other will produce a rack that is so quick, so, so sudden um, that, that it is not very pleasant to watch back as a viewer. Um, doing it manually, you can do it uh, very gently uh, smoothly and much more effectively uh, than with autofocus. Okay, so th that's a lot of the the why one would use uh, manual focus as opposed to auto. Um, the question then becomes is uh, how do I do it effectively? Uh, how can I improve? How can I practice? Um, and for those things I have a few tips for you. The first of which um, and, I'm, and I think m most modern mirrorless cameras have it, uh, certainly the, all the cinema cameras have it, uh, from the low end up to the highest end, uh, is something called focus peaking. Now, what that is, is basically 
uh, it's an in-camera tool that highlights the part of an image that is in focus uh, by outlining it uh, with um, a color. Uh, you can change colors as well in the menu. So you can, I choose, I usually, usually use red, but I think you have, depending on the, the camera, you can choose blue or yellow or green even, I think, um, as a highlight color. Uh, you can also change the thickness of that highlighting um, and it's usually expressed as a percentage uh, uh, of intensity if you like. Um, I tend to shoot depending on the lighting situation uh, with the focus peaking set to 70 to 95 percent depending on conditions. Um, it's a really really effective uh, tool in helping you uh, focus. And you can actually, as you, as you rack focus, you can actually watch the, 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 the focus plane shift from front to back and back to front. And you can actually even see the, the depth of the, uh, the field of focus um, uh, from front to back, whatever is, is there, um, whatever's going to be sharp, um, by watching those highlighted parts just move forward and back uh, on, the, on the monitor. So that's my first and, and most important tip, uh, is focus peaking. I can't emphasize how, 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 um, how useful uh, a tool that is. Um, my second tip um, would be for um, some hardware that you can use that will help you in your uh, or, uh, manual focusing endeavor. Um, the first of which would be to use a follow focus wheel. Uh, I will show you what that is here. So um, it's the little wheel that I've attached to the side of the camera here. And basically, um, this, this one is a um, Tilta Mini uh, follow focus. Um, and the benefit of using something like this um, is that Firstly, ergonomically, you don't have to have your hand over the top or underneath the lens trying to focus and pan at the same time. It's a lot easier having your hand to the side of the camera and moving forwards and back, moving the wheel forwards and backwards to, to acquire focus. So ergonomically, it's much more um, uh, comfortable to use and uh, easier to find focus with for that reason. Another reason um, it, it's um, amazingly helpful is that as, as, as most photographers and filmmakers, we're usually working to a tight budget, which means that we're gonna be using photographic lenses uh, rather than cinema lenses. And photographic lenses uh, tend to have a very shallow, very small throw um, to that, both to the focus and to the zoom, um, which means basically for the focus that you only need to move it very slightly uh, and it shifts focus quite dramatically. Now, if you're going to, if you're trying to find focus uh, on a particular subject, um, so you're trying to focus on the eyes, for example, uh, it's a really tiny shift from nose to eye to the, the focus point from nose to eye or e ears to eye, um, and it's really hard to do that by adjusting the the barrel, uh, the focus ring on the barrel. Um, because the focus wheel is geared, uh, it means that you can make a rather large turn with the focus wheel um, and it'll correspond to a very tiny um, uh, adjustment of the focus ring. Still on the subject of tools, um, hardware that you might use for uh, assisting you in manual focusing is um, either uh, an EVF, an external viewfinder such as this one, um, or an external monitor. Uh, or you might get both uh, if your budget allows and use them, uh, each of them in different scenarios as, as feels more comfortable to your shooting style. Um, the benefit of uh, an external monitor is that you, you'll usually, it'll usually be a much larger screen than the one on the back of your camera, um, making the uh, focusing much more obvious especially if you're using focus peaking as well. Um, similarly, it's true for an EVF because you're looking through a loop um, and a constant, sort of concentrating through the EVF at the scene, you can see, see detail more easily and you can find 
points of focus uh, much more easily. Um, and that's about it in terms of the uh, hardware and tools uh, that can assist you in manually focusing. Okay, so moving on to tip number three, um, and that would be uh, use, utilizing the focus magnification uh, in camera. So on most cameras on the back uh, screen, you have a magnification button, which you can punch into the image with and fine tune focus to get make sure that th those details are pin sharp, uh, an eye, um, skin patterns, uh, fur patterns, whatever. Uh, any details that you want to make absolutely sure are pin sharp, you can punch in uh, into the image and fine tune your focus on that. Um, the only uh, stipulation for that I would say is that it's a lot easier on static subjects. If you're trying to track a moving animal, uh, to zoom, to track, to focus uh, and magnify the image to uh, focus in on the detail, I, I think uh, you're not going to manage it. It's pretty impossible to do all of those things together. So, but for static subjects or relatively static subjects, punching in and making sure those details are sharp uh, is another useful tool. Uh, tip number four, uh, and that is to uh, try always to focus and to zoom um, smoothly, slowly and smoothly. Uh, if you just remember the adage, which I'm sure you've heard before, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Uh, and if you stick to that, uh, you won't go wrong. The key is to remember not to panic, basically. If you lose focus on your subject, um, think about it, take, your, take a moment, Think where the, the, the subject is moving to and then just very gently, very slowly reacquire focus. If you make quick sudden movements either to the camera or to the focus wheel, the shot is rendered useless. If you don't panic, keep your head, reacquire focus slowly and gently and smoothly. The shot is not lost, the clip is not lost. Uh, it can A shot where an animal is out of focus and then comes into focus again gently and smoothly um, is eminently usable in, in a sequence. And tip number five uh, is to try to start with your subject in focus. Um, for example, if you have um, a bird that you've been following uh, and you know it's where it perches, what have you, you can pre-focus on that branch. Um, and wait for it to arrive. Um, and then you'll be already in focus when that bird arrives on that branch. Um, if you are staking out a, a, a trail and you know where, a, or you can guess, predict where an animal, <coughs> excuse me, might emerge onto that trail, you can focus on that point. If you're staking out, for example, a kill, uh, you can focus on the kill um, and then you can see, have a look and see at the scene in front of you where the animal might emerge from um, towards that kill. You can focus on the one point and then practice um, pulling focus to the, to, to the destination point uh, whilst you're waiting for that animal to arrive. Um, being predictive in, in your focusing will uh, also really help you. My last main tip, uh, tip number six I think we're up to, um, is to set yourself up in a, as comfortable as possible a shooting position. If you're sat with a camera and you're not comfortable, um, you might get stuck when trying to track it. So for example, if I was sat like this next to, next to my tripod, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up against my leg when I'm trying to follow uh, the animal and, and then I'd have to shift, I might hit, knock the tripod, knock the camera, uh, lose the shot. So try and set yourself up in such a way where you can cover the entire range of where you think your subject is going to be um, and, and track them comfortably, be able to reach your camera's controls, uh, reach the follow focus wheel, um, look into your viewfinder or watch the monitor. Um, make sure you're comfortable uh, how you're set up so that you can do that um, and, and focusing on that subject will uh, be that much easier for it.
The last point I wish to make, it's not really a tip, but um, it's a really valid point, is uh, practice. Um, you must get out and practice your manual focusing. Um, there's no sort of two ways about it. If you want to get good at it, uh, you can only do that by putting in the hours. Um, you can set up bird feeders in your garden um, and you can practice pushing and pulling focus from one feeder to the other. You can set up perches uh, for the birds to either land on before they get to the feeder or when they fly off from the feeders to the branches and you can practice focusing, pre-focusing even on those branches, follow focusing when they fly off to the, um, to the feeder. You can um, push and pull focus between the two feeders, uh, between the branch and the feeder. You can do all kinds of things to practice uh, in, that set, in that kind of a setup. Or you can go down to your local uh, duck pond and set the tripod up, set the camera up, and just follow, follow the, the ducks as they swim around on the pond, trying to keep focus. Um, it's all about just practicing your art. Uh, and eventually you will uh, get good at it. It will become intuitive, it'll become second nature, muscle memory and all of that, uh, and you'll be able to do it without even thinking about it. But you've got to put in the hours. Okay, so that just about wraps up uh, all of my advice on using manual focus. Um, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, it really will help you uh, gain uh, precision and control over your uh, filming. It will liberate your creative juices um, to use better camera techniques um, for filming and make your sequences that much better for it. So uh, I thoroughly recommend you give manual focusing a go when, uh, when next you're out um, filming wildlife. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope it's been of value and uh, informative for you. Uh, if you have enjoyed, please do consider hitting the uh, thumbs up button down below and doing all that YouTube stuff, subscribing and all of that. Uh, drop me a comment below. Um, I really do appreciate it. I try and answer uh, as many as I can. Uh, and um, yeah, it just remains for me to thank you again all for your support. And I hope to see you again very soon. Bye for now.